Dean Amabad. This is uh, our weekly Halakha series. Um, thank you guys for coming. Inshallah, from here on out, because of the time change and stuff, we'll keep it at um, at this time, Inshallah. So after Salat al every week, Inshallah, it will, it will, we'll continue to have our program. Like we discussed last week, Inshallah, today we'll talk about time. And, and specifically, more specifically, we'll talk about Surah al -Azq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His Qur'an, He has revealed um, a book, He has revealed the Qur'an to us, which is about many different topics, and which is about many different things. And amongst those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has spoken about um, things that relate to our daily life. Allah ta'ala has talked in His Qur'an about us living. He has talked about death. Allah ta'ala has talked about salah. He has talked about fasting during Ramadan. But going ahead of those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also talked about things like health. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also talked about wealth, like money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also talked about things like time. Things that you probably wouldn't expect to be mentioned in the Qur'an, but the Qur'an covers every single topic. And a lot of the ulama, like uh, Imam Ahmed Rida Khan rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, rahimahullah, uh, ulama like him, they were, they were scholars of deen, but they also were scholars of dunya as well. They had a firm grasp on things like psychology. They had a firm grasp on things like philosophy, on sciences as well. You know, there's a new, a new uh, method of growing uh, fruits and plants. It's called aquaponics. Um, and basically, the, the method is, if you want to grow some, food, uh, some fruits, some plants, and you want to grow some fish, what you do is you, you, you pretty much you do it in water. So you add some fish and on top of that level you add like some plants and stuff. And it's actually really cool and everything grows in the water. Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, rahimahullah, he has like some books that discuss like aqua, a hydroponics and, and it kind of relates to this new method of doing things. So you'll find that the Qur'an, it covers so many different topics. And a lot of the ulama, a lot of the scholars, they weren't only scholars of deen, of religion, of Islam. They also were scholars of dunya as well, right? So they also were scholars and they had a firm grasp on things like science and stuff like that. And that's only because Islam promotes these things. It's only because Islam promotes these things. If Islam didn't promote talking about dunya, then the ulama, the scholars, they would never talk about it. But because Islam promotes it, the scholars talk about it as well. And one of those such things is time. And, and you know, time is such like a big topic. You hear the word time, you might think about, okay, you know, right now it's, it's what time is it? It's like six o'clock right now. You might think about that. When you think about time, you might think about history, about things in the past. When you think about time, you might think about a bunch of different topics. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes a qasam, He takes an oath by time. In Surah Al-Asr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Bismillah rahman rahim Allah says, Wal Asr. He takes an oath, a qasam, He swears by time. So whenever Allah ta'ala swears by something, for example, Allah said, Wal Duha, He swears by, by, by the morning sun. Allah ta'ala says, Wal Shamsi Wal Duhaha, He swears by, the, by specifically the morning sun. Allah says, Wal Duha, He swears by the sun in regular. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout Al-Qur'an al kareem throughout the glorious book of Allah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swears by many, many different things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, He swears by time. And we know that if somebody, you know, you ask somebody something like, oh, are you telling the truth? And they say, yeah, I swear I'm telling the truth. When a normal person swears by something, right? If we swear by Allah ta'ala, or when a normal person swears by something, he talks about like somebody's his mother or something like that, you know he only swears, this is wrong, we shouldn't be swearing, but when people do it, it means that that thing that they're swearing by is important. Nobody swears by something or about something that's not important, right? So when Allah Ta'ala says, Wal Asr, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala swears by time, it means that something is important about time. That there's something there that, and, and that's why Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is swearing by it. If it wasn't important, if it wasn't something that, you know, matters, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never swear by it. Think about it in your daily life. We swear by things all the time and it's wrong. We shouldn't be swearing by, uh, we shouldn't be swearing. We swear over the littlest and most dumb things. When somebody asks you, did you eat today? Yeah, yeah, say wallah bro. Like, like swear, swear by Allah, did you really eat? Uh, come on, you know, th these types of things are not to be taken lightly. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal Asq, He swears by time. And we pause here for a second and let's just talk about the surah a little bit. If you guys notice, whenever we end this halaqa that we have on Saturdays, uh, we always end it off with the recitation of, of, of Surah Al Asr. We say, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim wa Al Asr. In an insan and the fi khusr, in the ladina aman wa amilu salihat, wa tawasu bil haq, wa tawasu bil sabr. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, the first reason is that it's reported that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they would never leave a gathering. So just like we're sitting here now, the Sahaba would sit for food, for drink, a religious gathering to learn Islam, whatever it was. The companions of the Prophet, whenever they would sit, before getting up, they would recite Surah Al Asr and then they would leave. Before getting up, they would always recite this Surah and then they would get up and they would go. To remind themselves of not only the importance of time, but also to remind themselves of the message that is given in these verses. And Imam Shafi'i, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says that this Surah, if somebody can understand this Surah and they can understand the meanings of this, and they can learn and, and, and understand and bring this into their life, then it's enough for them. And they'll understand Islam, and they'll understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. It's that easy. So that's why this surah is important. So now let's make another point. And this is extremely important before we move to the next, the next, uh, the next verse. So today is, is not really a story, but it's more of an explanation of, of this surah. Uh, more, more of a, a, a tafsir based halaqa of this surah. So everything we do, and this is the last point before we move on to the, to, to the rest of the, the surah, I promise. So everything we do takes place during time. Every single action we do. You woke up in the morning, what time did you wake up? Somebody woke up at 8, somebody woke up at 12, someone woke up for Fajr and stayed awake, somebody didn't sleep at night at all. No matter what it was, it still takes place during time. We're sitting here right now, it's taking place during what? During time. It's like 6, it's almost 6.05 right now, right? So it's taking place during time. Nothing happens except that it takes place during what? During time. You grew up, it took time for you to grow up. Grow up. You were born, maybe you were born in the year 2000, in 19, 1990, whatever, 1980, whatever. You were born in 2005, to whatever, whatever the case is, 2003. Maybe you were born in 2010. Whenever you were born, it took place during what? During time. Every single thing you do that involves anything of your life, your education, your work, your deen, your namaz, and your roza, your hajj, your zakat, it all takes place during what? During time. You smile at somebody, you say hi, assalamu alaikum, it takes place during time. So that's a really important point. So Allah Ta'ala says, Wala asr, I swear by time. And then Allah says, Inna insana la fi khusr. That mankind, that humans, will be at loss. That as time goes on, people will be at loss. So time goes ahead and people come back. People go become worse and worse as time goes on. And remember, we said that everything we do takes place during time, right? Every single thing we do takes place during time. So one meaning of this, the ulama, they say that this means that as time goes on, that people, every single part of humans, it will become less, it will depreciate in value. That as time goes on, humans will become less. And I'm sure we hear our, our parents and our family say this all the time, except, especially our resort, our, the people who are older than us, they say, kya zamana tha? Kya zamana tha? They, they think about the old days, they, they think, you know, in the old times, people used to be so nice to each other. In the old times, people used to be so kind. They used to care about each other, right? They, they, they used to love each other more. They used to do good things. They used to be good Muslims before. And, and then they talk about, you know, and now the zamana is different. The time completely changed. And this is mentioned in the Quran. Allah said, What as? In the insan and the fi khusr. That Allah swears that as time goes along, every single thing about humans is going to become less and less. Think about it. When we hear about Adam alayhi salatu was salam, what do you think about when you think about Adam alayhi salam? Probably you think about his height, right? People talk about the height of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. They say that he was like 90 meters long. He was really, really tall, right? And then we hear the story all the time. A woman, she went to Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and, or one of the anbiya of Bani Israel, and she says, you know, uh, oh my Nabi, you know, I'm very sad today. And he asks, and she's crying. And he asks her, you know, why are you so upset? What's going on? Why are you crying like this? And she says, my son died. He was such a young boy. He was so young, he died so early. And you know, it's very difficult for, for a parent. It's very, very difficult for a parent to bury their own son. 
We don't think about burying the ones that are younger than us. We always think, okay, you know, in the back of your head, you probably think, okay, you know, the, the person that's gonna leave my janazah is, gonna, is probably gonna be like younger than me or something. Because we don't expect that we're gonna die early or we're gonna die young. And this woman, she comes to the, the, um, the Nabi and she says, uh, oh, my messenger, oh, oh messenger, ya, oh Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, I'm crying today because my son, he died so young. And, and I have no idea why he died so young. And when Musa salam asked her, like, how old was he? And she said, oh, he was only like 600 years old and he died so young. So back then, people used to live for, for years and years, hundreds and hundreds of years. And Musa salam said, you know, there's going to be a ummah, there's going to be a nation. And, and, and of those people, they're only going to live for 60, 70, 80 years. You know, around there, an estimate of 60, 70, 80 years. That's going to be their average lifespan. And the woman was shocked. She said, she said wow, like, how, how can that be possible? How can that be possible? We're here living, we're out here living hundreds and hundreds of years. And, and these people are, are going to live only 80 years, 90 years. Like, it didn't make sense to her. And even when we talk about Noah, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, what do they say? How many years did he give da'wah? Anybody know? It's a question. How many years did Nuh give da'wah? Like 900, 900, 950 years. So imagine, somebody gives, starts like their life after like 20 something years, 30 something years, or, and, and, and this guy, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, this prophet, he's giving da'wah for 950 years. Imagine how long he lived before that, and imagine how long his life actually was. Right? So subhanAllah, like, you know, this is, this is, from, this is from Allah Ta'ala. This is only from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we know and we learn and we understand that the people that came before us, they were very different than us. Even if you study something like evolution, if you study evolution, you'll see, uh, watch a basic evolution documentary, a basic documentary, a basic National Geographic show about monkeys and apes and, and cavemen. And, the first couple of things, the first couple of minutes, they're gonna say that a long time ago, people could see like 200 miles. Their eyesight could go up to 200 miles. And me personally, if I take my glasses off, I can barely see past the first row. And, and, and those people before, they used to be able to see hundreds and hundreds of miles ahead. So the point is, Allah Ta'ala said, Inna insana lafi khusr. That as time passes by, as time goes along, what's gonna happen? People will be at loss. People will be in, will be in a gata. They will, they will be in a, in a loss. People will automatically, as time goes by, people will be at loss. And remember, every single week, the same thing over and over again. Whenever Allah Ta'ala talks about punishment, or Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala tells you something and you feel like, you know, you know, you can't get out of this. Like, you know, insan, insan is going to be at loss. How can we get out of this? You know, what's the answer to this? There's nothing that can be happened, but no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Allah said, Yudha'af lahu al-adha. Best example for this. Allah said, the adab on yawm al-qiyamah is going to be so bad. And I, I keep repeating this example, keep repeating this example, because it's the best example for this. Every time Allah ta'ala mentions punishment, every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about something that happens, or He talks about people being at loss, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about something that we think is bad or it's gonna happen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us right away how we can answer it. Like Allah said, يُدَعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابِ Yawm al-Qiyamah, punishment will be so bad, إِذَا مَنْ تَابَ Except for those they do tawbah, Allah will, will enter them into Jannah without hisab, and Allah ta'ala will change their bad deeds into good deeds. And this is the verse of the Qur'an. So just like that, over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرَ that mankind, insan, every human, you're gonna be at loss. As time goes on, people are not gonna be nice, as nice as they were before. As time goes on, people won't be as athletic as they were before. As time goes on, people won't be as smart as they were before. As time goes on, people won't be kind as they were before. As time goes on, people won't be as religious as they were before. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does He say? Except for those who do what? They believe. Except for those who believe. And those who believe. Not only do they believe, what do they believe in? La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They believe that there's only one Allah. They worship and they obey and they follow the commands of only one ilah, of only one Allah. And they believe that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last and the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And why are we all here? We just prayed salah. Nobody here, we can't see Allah. We don't. We, we have never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May the, the most that, will have, that has happened is maybe we felt the barakah of Allah in our life. Maybe we felt blessings from Allah in our life. Maybe we felt that, okay, yeah, you know, there is a, Allah is there for us, but we, nobody saw Allah. But still we are here. Why? Because we believe. So we can check that off. In the ladina amanu. We all hear, what do we do? We believe. And then Allah said, وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do good deeds. And they do good things. And they do good things. That when somebody comes to them, and they ask them, ask them for help, they go and they help that person. That when somebody comes, and Rasulullah wasallam, he said, that the best people, that the best people are those people who help others. And, and this, this is the meaning of the hadith, that the best people, that the best people are those people who do what? They help other people. So Allah Ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who believe. So everybody will be a loser. But how can you be a winner? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You believe in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. You believe in the last day. You believe in the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. You believe that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is there for you. And you believe in Him. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ You know one Sahabi came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know Islam is hard for me, Islam is difficult for me. If I follow just the five main f- pillars of Islam, will I make it into Jannah? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yes, you will make it into Jannah just because just if you do the bare minimum, if you just do the bare minimum, if you just believe and if you just do those things and even on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the last round of people, the last group of people who are removed from Jahannam are going to be those people who we didn't see them or we didn't, we didn't see that they were Muslim. They didn't come to Jum'ah, they didn't come to the Masjid, they didn't read their Namaz, they didn't keep their Roza, they didn't go for Hajj, they didn't give their Zakat, but they will be the, those people, they still believed in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala In their heart, they still believed that there is Allah. They still believed in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of Yom Al Qiyamah. That's going to be the last group of people who are, who are who are taken out of the fire of Jahannam. That they are those people who even you didn't see. They didn't have a beard. They didn't wear a topi. They didn't wear hijab. They didn't fast in the month of Ramadan. They didn't come to the masjid ever. But still, Allah Taala takes them out. This is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Taala takes them out of Jahannam just because they believe. So belief is very important. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do good deeds. So if you want to be a winner, and we all want to be winners, we don't want to be the losers that Allah said, إِنَّا الْإِنسَانَ رَفِي خُسْرِ No, we don't want to be those people who are at a loss, who, 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 are, who are deteriorating and depreciating in value every single day. No, we want to be those people. We want to be amongst those people who are the winners. And how do you win? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ The first thing, you believe. Not only do you do all these things, there's four things in total. Not only do you do these things, you also tell others and invite others to do these things as well. So, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You believe. Our belief, our iman, our faith is the most important thing to us. We don't care if anybody presents us any new idea, any new ideology. The fact of the matter is, even if someone tells us something new or explains to us a new idea, you probably can find something similar to it in Islam. Because Islam is complete. So, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ You believe in Allah, you do good deeds. وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ And you speak the truth. And this is another really important point. We were speaking about swearing before. Do you really think if we became truthful people, if we became honest people, if we became trustworthy people, do you think that people will ask us to swear all the time? Not a chance. The only reason why people ask us to swear and to say wallah and to do this, to do that, swear on your mom, take a custom on this, you know, say custom bro. The only reason why people say that is because we are dishonest people. If we become honest and we become trustworthy and we start telling the truth, you made a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You messed up on your schoolwork, you didn't do your homework, it's not the end of the world. You forgot to do your test, you forgot to do something, you know, you didn't clean when your parents asked you. It's not the end of the world, there's no need to lie, just don't lie. Do you know how strong, you know, honest people, honest people, and people who speak the truth, and they tell the truth and they don't lie, you know, you should never lie. Even if you feel like 
you have to you know, cover up some, a mistake you made, it's never the end of the world. There's always a solution. And when you speak the truth, it will be easy for you. To tell one lie, to cover up one lie, you have to tell a hundred other lies. So somebody asks you, you go home late, your dad asks you, where were you? Oh, um, I was with Babur Bhai, you know, we were outside, we were eating. That's lie number one. Oh, what did you eat? We ate chicken wings. Okay, that's lie number two. Where did you eat? Oh, we ate at Jezif. Lie number three. What time did you go? We went at seven o'clock. Lie number four. Oh, who else was there? Oh yeah, Hamza was there. Harris was there. Uh, Umar was there. You know, Orangzeb's <laughs> hat was there. That's the fifth, sixth, seventh lie. And you're just gonna keep, he keeps asking you, oh yeah, what, did, what else did you do? This, that, blah, blah, blah. You keep lying, you keep lying, you keep lying. To tell one lie, just a small one lie, the teacher asks you, did you do your homework? No, I didn't do my, uh, uh, yeah, no, I didn't do my homework. Why didn't you do it? Oh, I forgot to do it. Oh, I had a family emergency. Oh, this, oh, that. Oh, what's the emergency? Oh, this happened to my mom. You know, just to tell one lie, you have to keep lying and keep lying and keep lying. Rasulullah wasallam never ever spoke a lie. We cannot even think that he spoke a lie. So much so that when uh, the, the Sahaba heard that Rasulullah wasallam he went on Mi'raj, when they heard this, when Abu Bakr heard this, the Kuffar said, he said, you know what your Nabi is saying? You know what Muhammad is saying? He said that in the night, Allah paused time and that he went to the heavens and, 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 and he came back. And when he came back, Allah Ta'ala, he, pa- he played time. And he did all of this in the night. And they asked Abu Bakr, they said, how can you believe this? Do you believe this? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he said, yeah. Did, did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did he say it? Abu, and, and the Kuffar, the, they said, yeah, he did say it. And Abu Bakr said, yeah, then I believe it, no problem. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what? He's as sadiq al-ameen. He's the honest one, the trustworthy one, the one that speaks the truth. And he never ever lied in his whole life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never ever lied. And that is who we should strive to be like. Always tell the truth no matter what. When you tell the truth, when you speak the truth, when you speak what is right, when you are honest and you are trustworthy, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you and puts barakah and blessings in your life. Lying never gets you anywhere. Speaking the truth gets you a special seat in Jannah and it makes you beloved to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe you tell a lie and, and for five minutes the other person is happy, but, uh, uh, but then Allah Ta'ala is upset at you. So what's the point of that? You rather please Allah and make someone else upset than make people happy and make Allah Ta'ala upset. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala said that Everybody's going to be a loser as time goes on, except for except for those who believe. And they do good deeds. They speak the truth. And the last one that is just only 75% now. And we have to ask ourselves, do we, are we honest? Do we do good deeds? Do we help our brothers and sisters? Do we help around in our house? Do we help our family? Do we help our mom cook and clean? Do we help our parents when they need need something translated or they need something printed or whatever the case is? Do we do those things? Do we help our neighbors? Do we help the non-Muslims around us? We have to ask ourselves, do we do good deeds? And then we gotta ask ourselves, do we speak the truth? Are we honest? Are we trustworthy? When we, whatever it is in any part of your life, do we speak the truth? Are we honest and trustworthy? And then Allah Ta'ala, He, he, he finishes the surah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, He says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and the last group of people, the last quality of a true believer, the last quality that you need to have if you want to be amongst those people who are the winners and who those people who are not at loss, is that you have sabr, you have patience, is that you're patient. And when someone tells you something that, okay, will happen in the future, then you wait and you say, okay, Tika, it's gonna happen in the future, no problem. And you're patient. And when you ask something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know that one day Allah will give me this. And you don't go and start running and complaining that, oh, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting my PS5. I'm not getting the, that, the new pair of kicks I wanted. I'm not getting uh, that new car I wanted. I'm not getting this house. What's happening? You start complaining. No, a Muslim doesn't do this. A Muslim is patient. He, he, he seeks the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
so many times Rasulullah وسلم, we can say he lost something in his life but he was patient and he persevered and he, he, he fought through that and look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored and blessed Rasulullah at a young age his father leaves the dunya at a young age his mother leaves the dunya Abdullah and Amina they both pass away the parents of Rasulullah وسلم, but yet he is patient and, 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 he, and, and he had sabr and, and look at his sabr instead and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him such a level, such a maqam, such a martaba that we still talk about him and we still love him, we still honor him 1400 years later. So my dear brothers and sisters and youngsters and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, he tells us what? He tells us as time goes on, people will be at loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ Except for those people who are what? They believe in Allah and His Messenger. Except for those people, uh, they do good deeds. They speak the truth. And they practice patience. They practice sabr. And not only do they do these things, but they also tell other people to do these things as well. This is the formula that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And if we look in the life of any of the Sahaba, any of the Sahaba, when Islam first started, you know, there's a story that there was this mother and, and son, and they became Muslim in the beginning. They became Muslim during a time where the non-Muslims used to beat up Muslims. If they saw somebody Muslim, they saw them reading Quran, they saw them reciting Hadith, they saw them praying their namaz, they used to go and beat them up and curse them out and tell them bad things. And this mother and son, they accepted Islam together. They became Muslim during that time. And it, things got so bad for them. Things got so bad for them that they started to struggle. They wanted to leave the dunya. They wanted to leave the, uh, leave the town. They wanted to leave the town. They wanted to just go away. They wanted to go far away. They didn't know what to do. So one day they're leaving the town. And while they're leaving the town, they reach the end of the town and they meet this man. And this is Umar radiallahu anhu before he became Muslim. And they became so scared. They said, you know, he saw us here today and he's definitely, he knows we're Muslim. He knows we're leaving because the Muslims are getting hurt and beat up. You know what? There's no chance we're gonna live or survive today. But they waited there, they, they stayed there, they were patient. They answered his questions, whatever he asked them, whatever he asked them. And then they were able to leave and flee the town and go to Abyssinia and, and seek the, the, the comfort of, of a different area so that they don't get hurt. Because you know, a lot of these people, they were old and they were weak, so they couldn't take the beating. So they moved away and they waited. They, they, had, they had patience, they had sabr. And look what happens. Some 20, 30 years later, Rasulullah وسلم, he comes back to Mecca and he, he conquers Mecca and he takes care of Mecca. So these people, they left Mecca because they were getting beat up. But a few years later, they come back to Mecca and they enjoy happily. Why? Because they had sabr and they had patience. All of these things that we mentioned, uh, belief in Allah, uh, doing good deeds, speaking the truth and having patience, these are the signs of a true believer. And this is what we need to have in our life if we want to um, be beloved but to by Allah, be beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we want to be amongst the winners on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah. One other point here is about time, is that we don't know how much time we have left. You know, it's a very famous statement that our brothers say, they say that everybody knows the date of birth, but nobody knows their date of death. It could be that you leave this masjid and you're never able to come back. It could be that you leave your home and you're never able to come back. And you never know when that, when that angel of death is waiting for you. We never know how much time we have in this dunya at all. So because we don't know that, we need to start praying. We need to start believing Allah more. We need to start calling uh, our brothers and our sisters to Islam more. We need to start doing more good things. Be nice to our family, our, our parents, our children, our neighbors. Just be a good person and be a nice person. And we all know what happened recently with, with, with the brother one of the uncles requested that we spoke, speak about this. We, we all know what happened with the brother uh, Aziz Ahmed, the three-year-old child who was, who was pretty much mauled by a dog and, and who, was, who was killed. And it just goes to show, you know, he was in his own home. 
They were in their own backyard, in their own house. But it was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that day is going to leave the dunya in some way or another. And you know, they even, they had, they, they had, they had COVID before, uh, before this happened. They had COVID. COVID didn't do anything to them. But then subhanAllah, this, this dog came and he took away the life of an innocent child. So it can happen to anybody. Don't ever think that, you know, I'm good. I'm going to live till 100 years. I'm going to live till 80, 90 years. We never know how long we have left. Who knew, who ever thought that we will ever come to this, this place in our life? Who ever thought one day, you know, I'm going to be, how, how old are you? Yeah, 16. Did you ever think I was going to be 16? You probably never thought that in your life. Some of the uncles here are, are, are 50, 60 years old. Nobody ever thought, you know, we're going to reach this age. Uh, you know, Brother Hamza is 23, 22. You probably never thought when you were little, like, one day I'm going to be 22, but look, here we are. But now we think, okay, we're going to be 30, 40, 50 years old. We plan for the future, but nobody plans for the grave. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Mutu qabla antal maut. That be that one, marne se pahle mar jau. Be the one that who dies before his death. He forgets the dunya, he leaves everything, he prepares for his akhirah. That doesn't mean just lock yourself in a room and Pray namaz all day, no. Live your life, go to school, become something, work a job, live your life, live with your family, enjoy, go out to chill with your, with your family, with your parents, with your friends, go to amusement parks, parks, play your video games, do everything, but while do you do it, be a Muslim and do it. Be a Muslim and go to school. Be a Muslim and, and, and go to work. Be a Muslim and play your game. Be a Muslim and go and play ball. What does that mean? Be nice to each other, be kind to each other, be honest, be trustworthy, follow the commands of Allah Ta'ala of this surah. It's so easy. In the Ladina Amanu Aminu Salihat, do good deeds, Wadawasab al Haq, speak the truth, Wadawasab bi Sabr and practice patience. And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will allow us to do these things and we ask Allah Ta'ala to allow us to act upon the words that have been said. So inshallah now we'll take some reflections about time. So we'll give you guys just a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, mashallah, Khizr is here after a long time, so I'm expecting expecting me to speak. Inshallah, and we also we have.